Hello, beautiful souls. How are you? This is going to wrap up our Letting Go series. I'm so happy to have been able to bring this to you. It's been a good um, refresher for many people. I've gotten lots of good comments, lots of good feedback. And if this is triggering you, I want you to really take a pause before you let the claws come out and determine, is this how you want to be the rest of your life? Where real conversation that's more than superficial judgment and bias triggers you is if it's not, you can take your power back. You can get clear. You can understand where those triggers, triggers actually came from the source, heal it. Healing is what needs to be done because we don't have control over what other people do or what other people say. We only have control over how we respond to that. So I really, really do want you to heal and I want you to be able to live a full and complete life without feeling like you can't be in certain spaces um, or engage with certain people because of the triggers. That being said, today's topic is people pleasing, people pleasing. And again, uh, I, I kind of have in my mind what what that entails like what does people pleasing look like to me but i also consulted a generic search engine and just got like some of the top people pleasing characteristics and that's what we're going to go on and through in just a minute okay sorry there when you see the lights kind of flicker my face kind of gets light and dark, light and dark. There are souls that are getting my attention to get crossed over. So I stopped to get them on their way. Benevolent souls. Just ready to get the heck out of Dodge. Can't say that I blame them. Okay. People pleasers. It's so exhausting. If you're a people pleaser, you deserve to stop that insanity. It has been long time developed. These are long habits that have absolutely become ingrained in who you are. But there are ways to take your power back. Let's get into it. Are you your own energy vampire? Okay, let me let me just define energy vampire. Someone or something, person, place, or thing that drains all your energy. So we look outside of ourselves typically for energy vampires, but what if you are your energy vampire because you're a people pleaser and you tell everyone, yes, I can do that. No problem. Even though you're running on vapors. See what I mean? You could be your own energy vampire. Shame. Okay. Let's go through it. Do you have a hard time saying no? Don't want to let anybody down. Don't want to have them guilt you into feeling a certain way. So you never say no. Do you avoid conflict? Do you go along to get along? Do you pacify anyone and everyone all the time? Withholding all your energy inside, clogging your throat chakra, among other chakras. Do you overcommit and give all your time away? Even when you don't have it to give, you say, yes, I can do that. I'll be there. I'll pick them up. I'll make it happen. Do you apologize habitually? Even before you ask a question or say anything, you apologize for just existing. Do you recoil and become very anxious or nervous when someone around you, even in your vicinity that you're not aware of, gets angry? Do you seek constant approval? Because if you're getting a pat on the back, that means you're not in trouble. You're not being blamed for something. Do you hold in your true feelings out of fear of getting hurt? Is your self-esteem very low and do you feel unworthy or undeserving of anything good? Very sad. Do you feel responsible for everyone else's happiness and do you feel a need to save everyone? We are not in control of other people. It's this thing called free will choice. And a lot of people do free will choice them, themselves into everybody else's life instead of their own. 
do you take on the actions of those around you? Like if everyone is in fear of something, you automatically adopt that. Or if everyone's happy about something, you're just like, oh, what are we happy about now? Without even knowing the context. Do you feel burdened with the idea of doing something for yourself because it's easier to do for others? I was that way. I was absolutely that way. A true people pleaser will continuously put their own needs lower on the priority list in order to prioritize need the others people needs around them. Now, if you resemble or resonate or get triggered by any of that, please let's start working through the steps that you can take to take your power back. So when a being has a hard time saying no, reasons are endless. There, I couldn't list all the reasons, but the results are the ones I want to talk about. So when you're always saying yes to everything and you never give anyone a boundary, you never say no, you are left feeling scattered and unable to focus. You are left feeling depleted of your energy and you have no idea what your desires, your passion, your wants and needs are because you have focused on everyone else's. You are full of guilt, shame, blame, and judgment since that's the predominant energy that you're encountering. That's all low vibrational energy. So you're going to be low vibrational yourself. Your frequency is in the dirt without a clue as to what your own needs and desires are. I was absolutely there. I was absolutely there. As I was coming out of the, the matrix rat race, probably the last, I mean, my entire working career, I was on this constant high level of stress for multiple reasons. I was stressed on a personal level. I was stressed on a professional level. I was stressed financially. I, I was always under this high level of stress. And that is super unhealthy, first of all. So, but Hey, I thought I was a big success because I was able to manage, you know, juggle all these fireballs everywhere. But when I'm starting to come out of that, I'm I'm telling myself, you know, I'm I'm listening to the guides and they're saying, what brings you joy? And I had no freaking idea because I didn't ever give myself the ability to to be joyous about anything. I was always worried about everything else and other people and it's not that I didn't say no. I had zero time to give. I had zero time to give. Every ounce of my being was scheduled, which is also unhealthy. Please don't do that. So I had to really get to know who I was. Who had I become? Is that who I really wanted to be? Because I didn't really like how I felt. And so I knew I had to make some changes. When a being is known for being passive or not engaging in conflict, the stronger energies around them are going to be attracted to your light, but also going to bowl you over. Okay. They're going to know that they can feed off of you energetically, that they can manipulate you emotionally, spiritually, um, mentally, and they can also physically manipulate you, you know? So it, it really opens up Pandora's box of people that will be additional energy vampires in your vortex so your your patterns of behavior attract like you your vibe attracts your tribe right so you're super low vibe and you're not confrontational you are a buffet for energy vampires witches and vampires also, people that find themselves in this situation tend to have chronic and undiagnosed disease and pain because of all the stored blocked energy, not just in your chakras, but blocked energy just takes up space wherever it can find it. And outside of you, your whole entire aura could be full of congestion, rips, tears, holes from all the stuff that you feel in your energy field and never deal, never deal with. So it's just out there hanging out, waiting for you to deal with it, waiting for it to become enough of a problem for you to notice it. Um, when you allow that manipulation to occur, all it does is disempower you, right? And so it's another layer 
of shadow work that you have to do to try to get back to who you truly are at the core of you. When the financial manipulation comes into play, because uh, many times, many times, the only people that are spending time with you are the ones that are going to get something from you. And it's a codependency type thing as well. And so if, if you really don't want to be alone because you're miserable and being alone means you got to like hear your own thoughts and hear your higher self and you don't like that. So you're going to stay involved with all these people, places, and things that are not good for you. And now next thing you know, you're going to be paying for parties. You're going to be paying for vacations and all these energy vampires are just siphoning everything they can from you to the point that they're irresponsible. They want you to pay for their things that are also irresponsible. And then you get yourself into a bind because they, they're never going to return the favor. They're never going to be able to help you out. If you realize that you've overextended yourself because you've never said no. And you keep paying for stuff and you keep saying, sure, I'll do that. Sure, I'll do that. But over committing yourself breaks you down physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. You consistently wear yourself down to exhaustion, which in turn makes you sick, which in turn makes you weak, which in turn makes you dependent on those who you need to be separating yourself from. Constant apologizing, even before asking a question, are traits of chronic, demeaning, belittling behavior being received. So some of this comes from ancestral trauma. Some of this you bring into life with you. That soul has has been of these same characteristics in other lives and beat down and abused and... um manipulated and made to feel unimportant and unworthy and undeserving and unwanted. And so some of that stuff comes with you. That's some of the ancestral trauma that we have to clear. And, and it, so for your perspective, you're like, that's just how I am. That's how I've always been. I don't know of anything that caused it because it, it happened in a prior lifetime, but it's still things that need to be healed in your being. Many times they apologize before they ever even say a word. The first thing that they say is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I have to ask this question, but, or I'm sorry, I don't, I'm, I'm not following. Can you explain that? Yes, I can. Why are you apologizing for asking a question? Like, why are you apologizing for just being present? Because they feel so unworthy. That's why. Because they don't believe in themselves. They don't have the confidence in themselves to be exactly where they need to be, where they are. And they're doubting, 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 doubting the entire time. Recoiling and being stressed and, an an and anxious around someone else that becomes angry are signs of abuse of any type, all types. Okay, so, um, and I, I've seen this many times and I've said this many times. Words have so much power and it, depending on the word and who it's coming from, it can be as forceful as a slap or a punch. And it, it can really cause harm in a way that if you got punched, that's going to heal, that bruise is going to heal. But the wound that doesn't heal, the core wound comes from the words behind it. And it's detrimental to a soul. It really, really is. It totally changes the dynamic of that energy being. And you definitely deserve better if this is you. Seeking approval all the time. It means that you're desperate for good vibes. You're, you'll do anything to get a pat on the back and not be in the other column, which is getting yelled at or not being appreciated or worse yet, not even being noticed. If you're afraid to speak your opinion, your true feelings that need to be expressed get stored. That energy, right? It's energy. We're we're energy bodies. And we, when we speak, we deliver a frequency. For me to be able to speak on this platform in the way that I'm led to speak, I have to make sure that I have a lot of protections in place because... The ones that don't want the truth getting out love to attack my throat chakra. 
Now I do really, really good at making sure I have everything in place. I have a lot of great protection in, in there. Um, a lot of things I learned along the way, but there are times where it gets through and I know immediately I can tell immediately because I'm, I, I make sure that I stay clear. But if you're never clear, you don't understand what you're feeling. You don't understand that it's energy and you think you're getting sick. And then you start to have victim mode, right? Oh, I, you know, I don't know why I always get sick. I don't know why I always lose my voice. I don't know why. Well, because you're running on vapors. You're not taking care of yourself. You don't have any energy reserves. And what you have left, they still want that too. So in many times, many, many ways, we are our own biggest hurdle. Yeshua says that all the time. Humans are your own biggest hurdle, you know, and, and, and his, in the context that he says that is there's always this demand for truth. And then when they hear the truth, they don't like it. They're like, that can't be right. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not that hard. Like you ask for the truth, you get it from, from the divine Senate ascendant master himself. And you go, no, that can't be right. Okay, so when you have intestinal issues, GERD, reflux, chronic constipation, IBS, um, headaches, skin rashes, cancer, a lot of this is from prolonged and continual um, not expressing your truth, not standing in your sovereign power allowing your your power to be taken from you so the energy never gets to flow it's always stuck your chakras are closed and blocked because they don't want to get hurt and feel anymore everything is a roadblock everything is a pain and i can't even tell you the number of people that have had some chronic issues they go to the doctor all the time they're in therapy they're not making any headway because it's not it's not a problem that those providers can assist with. It is born out of energy, out of an energy distortion and out of energy blockages. And when that is cleared, that starts to open up and pave the way to healing. And that is the healing that people need. They don't need a prescription. They don't need surgery. They don't, they don't need that stuff. They just need to be able to move their energy through their body the way that we were intended to. So if you feel... Like you want to say something, but if you say it, you understand that there's going to be repercussions. I'm not advocating for someone to go against a physical abuser, like toe to toe and, and put your life at risk. That is not what I'm saying ever. I don't want anyone's life at risk ever. I want you to get out of that situation though, because you deserve better. If you're in a situation where you just have the fear of actually speaking your truth because you are afraid to not fit in or you're afraid to be made fun of, well, that's a different scenario, isn't it? And it you really have to get over yourself. How do you do that? You haven't spent in a lifetime of not speaking your truth. So how do you all, all of a sudden one day start speaking your truth? Well, you start writing, you start journaling, you journal out your thoughts you journal out everything. The first couple of drafts are going to be very emotional. They're going to be very supercharged. It may be super scattered and not, not real focused there. That's fine. Get it out. Burn it in the violet flame. Like burn it in fire, but send it to be transmuted. The next time you go to journal on that topic, some of that high emotion and sensation is gone in the first draft or first couple of drafts. And then you start to journal again and you're flowing. You can feel that, that energy flow from you to the page. And you, you realize that you're just writing. It's not coming through your brain. It's coming through your energy. It's just, and you're just, it's called channel writing. You're just writing what your higher self is flowing through you. And when you go back and read it, it's cathartic. And you go, okay, this is not who I am. This is not who I want to be. Put a big X, X through it and burn it. Transmute it to love and light. The next time you want to journal about that, you may have a completely different perspective about that topic. And you're like, what? This sounds really good. 
The next thing I recommend is, is jumping from the page to speaking it. Now, there are many people that really can't speak their truth to their partner or their, their spouse, their families because of repercussions. If that is your scenario, don't let that stop you from speaking it. Go for a walk and speak your truth while you're walking. Give it to nature. It's going to be transmuted and received. The trees are full of wisdom. They've heard everything for the ages and they're there for you. Um, you can also speak it into the mirror. You can go to the bathroom, turn the music on so no one hears you or whatnot. And you can speak your truth into the mirror. And it's the purpose of like the exercise of actually verbalizing and sending your frequency out that, that sheds the blocked energy in your throat chakra and it starts to free you and you start to feel some confidence in your throat, in your ability to speak the truth. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Okay, so you're going to work on speaking whatever it is that you've been holding in. Okay, you're going to, it could be your family. It could be your boss. It could be the government. Boy, don't we have a lot to say. It, it could be anything. Stop holding it in. That's the best thing you can do. Stop holding it in. When you start to practice this, it's going to stop feeling so foreign. It's going to come a little easier. The next time you have the opportunity to answer someone honestly, to actually share your thoughts, because now that you've gotten through all the emotion and you've peeled back some of the layers, you actually know what your thoughts are, huge, huge step, then you can actually have this deeper conversation with people. And it helps you realize that your words are worthy to be heard and you don't have to just agree with what everyone else is saying. You can have a difference of opinion and you're going to be okay for it. Like it really is okay to have a difference of opinion. And I want you to understand that you have the ability in most cases to completely turn this around. These are learned behaviors and they, they are long entrenched in who you are, but it doesn't mean you can't change. And there's so much about me today that does not even recognize who I was before. And I'm super happy about it because I was such a sad, a sad, I was a sad person. And I tried to fill that hole in my heart with things and it never worked. And, and I was angry, you know, it was a lot of things that I had to work through. And the only way that was going to happen was for me to do the work. And that's the thing. No one can do your shadow work for you. This is the importance of shadow work. So if you find that you're a chameleon and no matter what little group you, you join, whether it's uh, the soccer moms or a uh, work group or a church group or whatever it is, and you just blend in with the crowd and you agree with everything everybody's saying because the worst thing in your life would be to stand out you have shadow work to do you have a lot of shadow work to do and you're the only one that can do it but I invite you to start because the payoff is phenomenal phenomenal to take your power back realize what really makes you happy realize what you've been doing that doesn't make you happy and make choices and changes along the way to further align your soul, your heart, your body to source and get away from the insanity, the chaos, the, the craziness. Anytime you want something to change, you have the ability to change it. It is, it really is as simple as making that choice. You have the freedom to change it. You have to do it. No one can do it for you. Anytime it comes up and and you're wanting to do kind, loving things for yourself, if you feel so uncomfortable, even having a conversation about doing kind and loving things for you, that's where you got to start. 
You see, because you've ignored your own needs for so long that it is an uncomfortable conversation to even consider giving yourself kindness and healing and compassion and love. And you will never find anyone else to love you like you can love you. You know, you have to get to know yourself. You have to understand yourself. You have to work through the pain. You have to quit harming yourself and put the energy that you invest in everyone else into your own healing. You're so quick to run down the road and help so-and-so, but the idea of taking an afternoon mental health break, going to the park, laying in the sun and just having nothing to do freaking terrifies you that is so warped you have to swap that around you have to give yourself some love and kindness and compassion and that's the thing if you're not willing to do it for yourself why would anybody else be willing to do it for you if you're not willing to love yourself the best that you possibly can don't expect anyone else to because you're already setting the standard that it's acceptable to treat you like shit because you treat you like shit. It doesn't matter how many good things you do for the people down the road. When you come home, if you're really unkind to yourself and you have bad diet, bad habits, and you are mean to yourself, basically, because you're not giving yourself the healing and the time and you're not centering yourself, you're not grounding your energy, you're letting yourself be run all over God's creation. You're your own worst enemy. You're causing a lot of the issues. That's where whenever we do love, forgiveness, and gratitude, you got to include yourself because you are culpable. And many people do not like hearing that. How dare you say I had something to do with that pain that happened to me? But you did. But you did. And you can, uh, it's okay. Forgive yourself for it. Love yourself. Be grateful that you woke up and you got the healing and you gave yourself the time and the compassion to do that. It's really important. I cannot stress it enough. To be able to be in a place where you no longer cringe because you want don't know what receiving love feels like or receiving kindness. I've been there. I still actually struggle with that a lot because of the um really crappy relationships that I can't came out of you know I was conditioned to not have like physical contact and not hug and not all these things that I used to do freely without any with so much emotion and without any strings attached and now I struggle with that okay those are some of my own hurdles I am not speaking from a place where I have not experienced the same thing I've been there and I've done it and I'm still doing it But the work that you do to rediscover who you are and what really makes you happy and what really doesn't make you happy, right? Those are really important things to know. That way, when someone asks your opinion, you can give it. Of course, you're going to agree with what everybody else says because you don't even know yourself. You don't even know that you don't like that because you've never given yourself permission to have a different opinion. It's time to stop the insanity. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome is the definition of insanity. And most people do that. They want their life to be different, but you can't just want it into existence. You have to do the work. If you feel like I'm talking about you or I'm talking directly to you, then I am. And this is for you. And I just really ask for you to try these steps. Try the journaling Try working on some things for for your your own personal growth on your own. You can always come to violetlotusenergy.com and schedule your QET session. When you come into that that website, but also you come into this the soul group. We want to help you to the best of our ability. We are not going to do your work for you. But we have one-on-one coaching available. We have the activations. We can heal the inner child. We can heal PTSD. 
we can do a lot of things that can help you to grow and be the soul that you are, are meant to be and remember who you are. It's right there inside you. You just have to give yourself focus. So, and that's another really good aspect of talking to the mirror because you're giving yourself attention and you're looking yourself in the eye. If you have a hard time looking at yourself in the mirror because you don't like what you see, how long are you going to continue to let that happen before you make a change? It's up to you. It's up to you. And you can do this. You have the power and the ability to do this now more than ever, because so much is just done remotely and through this type of transmission. I want this for you, but you have to want this for you too. I can't do it for you. Love, kindness, compassion, empathy, time and nature, healing yourself, becoming authentic and understanding what that means reclaiming your sovereignty and understanding what that means it's all how you take your power back if any of that is really uncomfortable to think about loving yourself being compassionate to your own needs being kind to yourself start there start there just start with one thing and the the people that you already have a, a physical reaction to so let's just give you a scenario a name comes across your phone and the first thing your body does is you get a cramp in your, in your guts, like, or you get nauseous or you get a sharp pain in your head. That's your body telling you not to give this person any more attention. All you have to do is ignore, ignore or answer and go, I cannot do this anymore. This isn't working for me. I cannot do this anymore. I need a break. It's okay. Source and Mother Sophia want you to heal. They want you to feel better. They want you to feel empowered. They want you to make yourself a priority. You are solely in control of you. We don't control other people, period. But that being said, whenever you enforce your boundary to someone, it's simple. They go away. They go away. They're not getting what they used to get from you. There's no longer um, a good investment for their energy either. They're going to go the other direction. Try it. It works every time. Take an inventory of these people that make you, that give your body a physical response to them. Take an inventory of that. Make a list. Go through your contacts. See who you're always talking to. And just see how your body feels. Tune into your body and see how your body feels whenever you talk to them next time. It's probably not the situation. It's the person. It's the energy exchange there. Because it's all one-sided. They're sucking your energy dry. And they're leaving you with nothing. But they always got their hand out. And they want more and more and more and more and more. And you feel so needed. Because they always need you. But what are they actually taking from you? Is it something you continue want to you want to continue to give? You want them to keep taking all your energy and your passion and your desire because you're not giving your time to yourself to figure that out? It's up to you. It's no one else's job to do that for you but you. We want you to be resolved and compassionate and stay true to yourself and love yourself. And not give up on the shadow work. Shadow work is work. It is not rainbows and butterflies. And it is not a checklist. And it happens every single day if you're paying attention. It doesn't have to derail your entire soul path. Just buck up and do the work. Don't fear it. Okay? False evidence appearing real. There's nothing to fear. You are your own hurdle. Get out of your way. And get to healing. Now, if you want to have a best friend and you want to have like the best love of your life, be your own best friend. Be the most loving, compassion, kind person to yourself. That's where it starts. When you start to love yourself and you start to really appreciate who you are, then it doesn't feel so bad to be alone. And before you know it, 
you're going to enjoy being on your own because you're going to have rediscovered who you are and what makes you happy. And that is going to be what you gravitate toward. You're going to gravitate away from the chaos because that was not your vibe. Now you found your vibe and it is in nature or it is painting or it's dancing or it's singing. Whenever you may turn your throat chakra on and start expressing your truth and become a speaker. Who who knows? It's it's limitless what you can do. But you have to put the step one foot in front of the other. Keep going down the path. Keep doing the work. Keep receiving the information. Keep being open to understanding that we are not perfect. None of us are. It just takes a little bit of courage and a whole lot of faith. There are seven pillars of mindfulness. I just thought this was interesting. Non-judgment. Patience. Have a beginner's mind, which is like you're always receiving new information. There's always something new you can learn. Trust, trust in source creator, trust in yourself. If you can't start there with trust, you got trust issues. You got to be able to trust yourself for sure. Non-striving. So people are always like, what's next? What's next? What's next? What, what are we doing now? They completely miss the beauty of the moment, of the now moment. Everything's actually happening in the now moment stay there stay there enjoy the flow of energy as it comes to you and just enjoy it acceptance acceptance is a huge trait are you accepting that you fall short of taking care of yourself while you take excellent care of everyone else it's not about that you really truly do not get accolades at the end of your life for ignoring all your needs and taking care of everyone else's they have the responsibility to take care of themselves at a certain point. And you had a responsibility to take care of you at a certain point, which you ignored. And number seven, letting go, which is exactly what we have done this week. We have let go of toxic people, material attachments, religious dogma. That one's on rumble. <laughs> um... I forget what yesterday's was because it's a blur. And now we're talking about people pleasing. So I just want you to understand there are many, many, many layers of decluttering, many, many layers of letting go of attachments, many, many layers of letting go, period. It can seem overwhelming, but you just have to start somewhere. Just pick a spot and start. There is not really a wrong... Or, way to do it as long as you're doing some of the work every day some of these questions are just to see like a gauge do you process or do you bypass if something happens it's a hiccup in the day 222 on the clock and uh, do you process it as it happens or you just psh, put put it off to the back burner put it off to the back burner next thing you know the whole back burner is blowing up because you put everything there you know, so start going with the flow and processing thing, things as you can in the now moment. Do you recognize your own intuition? Do you know what that feels like? And whenever you feel it, do you act appropriately? Do you have inner child trauma that is dictating how your adult life is navigated and will always until you heal it? Are you really detaching and cutting cords from those that are not good for you? Or are you just ignoring them? Because that's a huge difference. If you're just ignoring them, but the cord is still attached, they can still siphon your energy and they're still taking up space in your mind. So you're going to continue to manifest a relationship with them. You can't, you can't do it that way. That's not how you do it. Shadow work is the place to focus your energy. You've been giving your energy away to all these other things and people, places, and events shadow work is where you want to focus your energy because that's where the gold is that's where you get through all this this negative time loop that you've been on and you actually start to grow and evolve and process and let go and heal that's how you do it 
source creator and mother Sophia want this for you. I promise you are your own hurdle, but you also have the power to move that hurdle out of your way and start down the path of your soul journey. Remembering who you are and why you came here and forgiving yourself. No one is perfect. We come to this gangster planet for the social experiment of earth school. It's hard. It's hard. This is where you got to put the, the work in. This is where you got to put your, your work in. So we have all these things that we can help you with at violetlotusenergy.com. But you have to come with an open mind. You have to come with a willing heart and you have to be ready to accept the hard truths. This will free you from the bonds that hold you back. From the inability that you feel like you have to speak your truth. All of a sudden, you're going to start speaking your truth and it's going to feel pretty dang good. And you're going to keep doing it. That's where we're going to give you a pat on the back. If all of this resonates or even one bit resonates please do yourself a huge favor and don't let anyone dim your light anymore it is time to shine i'll see you again next time